Trauma is not what happens to you, but what happens inside you as a result of what happened to you. Dr. Gabor Mate, The Myth of Normal Welcome to the video book summary of The Myth of Normal by Dr. Gabor Mate. In this book, Dr. Mate discusses the rising rates of chronic disease and mental illness, and how our culture may be contributing to these alarming trends. Western medicine tends to focus on individual pathologies, but Dr. Mate argues that the root causes of many illnesses lie in the toxic nature of things we consider normal, such as stress, adversity, and trauma. Dr. Mate has over four decades of clinical experience and is known for his work in treating addiction. He has written several best-selling books, including In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts and Hold On to Your Kids. This is his third book collaboration with his son, Daniel Mate, an award-winning lyricist and composer based in Brooklyn. In the following summary, we will explore the key insights from the myth of normal and learn how identifying and addressing underlying conditions can pave the way back to health. If you want to learn more about various topics and gain insights from top authors and other thought-provoking books, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more video book summaries. Don't miss out on any valuable insights, hit the subscribe button now. Trauma is a complex and multifaceted experience that affects individuals both physically and psychologically. At its core, trauma is an inner injury that occurs as a result of difficult or hurtful events. This injury can persist long after the original event and can be triggered at any moment. There are two ways in which a wound can manifest, as an open sore or as a scar. An open wound is a constant source of pain and leaves an individual vulnerable to being hurt again and again. It also limits their ability to move forward and act confidently. On the other hand, a scar provides protection and holds tissue together, but it is inflexible and unable to grow. In either case, trauma is a constriction of the self, both physically and psychologically. Trauma has a significant impact on a person's view of the world and of other people. It can keep them stuck in the past and prevent them from fully engaging in the present. It can also fragment the self and interfere with healthy brain development, particularly in childhood. Left untreated, trauma can be a major impediment to flourishing and can contribute to illness of all kinds throughout an individual's life. Despite the significant impact that trauma can have, it is often avoided, ignored, belittled, denied, misunderstood, and untreated. Peter Levine has called it perhaps the most avoided, ignored, belittled, denied, misunderstood, and untreated cause of human suffering. It is essential that we acknowledge the lasting effects of trauma and work to heal the wounds it leaves behind. Trauma is a wound that runs deep leaving an enduring mark on our psyche and physical body. It is like a splinter that is embedded in our skin, causing us to feel pain every time we touch it. The event that caused the trauma may be long gone, but the injury remains, like a festering wound that refuses to heal. If we don't take care of our wounds, they can fester and become infected. Similarly, if we don't address our trauma, it can leave us with a scar that impacts every aspect of our lives. The scar may provide some protection, but it also limits our ability to move freely and feel fully. Imagine trauma as a chain that binds us to our past, holding us back from the potential of our present and future. The weight of that chain becomes heavier with every passing day, pulling us down and making it harder to move forward. But healing is possible. It requires us to confront the wound head-on, to look at it and acknowledge it for what it is. We must be willing to peel back the layers of scar tissue, to expose the raw wound underneath, and to clean it out so that it can finally start to heal. 
healing requires compassion and self-awareness. It involves learning to listen to our bodies, to feel our emotions, and to accept ourselves as we are. We must learn to identify the triggers that set off our trauma and to understand how it has impacted our relationships and our sense of self-worth. It is a difficult journey, but it is also a transformative one. As we begin to heal, we start to shed the weight of the chain that has held us back. We begin to feel lighter, more free, and more open to the possibilities that life has to offer. Healing is not a quick fix, but a lifelong process. It requires us to be patient, to be gentle with ourselves, and to continue to work through the layers of trauma that have built up over time. But it is worth it. Through healing, we can find a pathway to wholeness, to a life where we are not defined by our wounds, but by our resilience, strength, and capacity for growth. Trauma in all its forms, can be likened to a storm that ravages the inner landscape of a person's being. Some storms are small and fleeting, leaving only a few scattered leaves in their wake. Others, however, are far more violent and leave behind destruction that can take years, if not a lifetime, to recover from. The first type of trauma, known as capital T trauma, is the kind that often makes the headlines. It's the result of severe and often ongoing abuse or neglect, or other major life events that have a profound impact on a person's psyche. These events can create a chain reaction of symptoms that can be physical, mental, or emotional, leading to diagnoses of various disorders and illnesses. They can even damage a person's genes and predispose them to physical ailments. The second type of trauma, small t trauma, is less dramatic but far more insidious. These are the seemingly mundane events that can fly under the radar and cause long-lasting damage. For example, the repeated harsh words of a parent or the casual bullying of a child by their peers can leave a person with deep scars that are hard to shake off. In today's world, it's becoming increasingly clear that trauma is not just an individual issue, but a societal one. We are bombarded by a constant stream of distractions, from social media to news updates, that pull us away from the present moment and our true selves. It's easy to become lost in a never-ending cycle of work, entertainment, and meaningless conversations, all in an effort to avoid the painful emotions that trauma can bring up. What's more, trauma is often passed down from generation to generation, as parents unwittingly pass on their own unresolved issues to their children. It's a vicious cycle that can be hard to break. But there is hope. Just as a storm eventually passes, so too can trauma be healed. It takes time, patience, and often the help of trained professionals, but it is possible to find peace and healing after even the most devastating of traumas. By facing our past and our emotions head-on, we can break the cycle of trauma and create a brighter future for ourselves and for generations to come. If we could begin to see much illness itself not as a cruel twist of fate or some nefarious mystery but rather as an expected and therefore normal consequence of abnormal, unnatural circumstances, it would have revolutionary implications for how we approach everything health-related. Dr. Gabor Mate, The Myth of Normal In the 1990s, an unexpected phenomenon was observed at the Cleveland Clinic. Despite having only brief contact with patients, the nursing staff seemed to possess a peculiar ability to predict who would develop a myotrophic lateral sclerosis (ALS), a degenerative autoimmune disease that attacks nerve cells in the brain and spine. The nurses would scribble comments in each patient's chart, with statements like probably has ALS, she is too nice, or no way, he is not nice enough. Remarkably, their predictions were almost always correct leaving the neurologists amazed and puzzled. This curious incident was not simply a fluke, research has since substantiated the nurse's observations. One published article even bears the title, Patients with ALS are usually nice persons. 
Similarly, Cancer Nursing in 2000 looked at the link between anger repression and cancer. But how could personality traits such as niceness or anger repression possibly predict the onset of a disease? Dr. Gabor Mate, a world-renowned physician, believes that the answer lies in trauma and chronic stress. Drawing on his extensive experience as a physician, Dr. Mate has debunked the myths surrounding what makes us sick. In his powerful critique, he argues that society's idea of normal fosters illness and that trauma and chronic stress often underlie much of what we call disease. According to Dr. Mate, diseases such as cancer, autoimmune disorders, and even mental health conditions are often a reasonable response to the adverse conditions of trauma and stress that many of us face. Instead of viewing disease as individual pathology, we must recognize it as a signal that what we consider normal is neither natural nor healthy. Therefore, by acknowledging the toxic nature of what we call normal, we can take steps towards healing based on compassion. It's time to stop accepting the idea of normal and instead embrace the truth that every individual has their unique experiences and needs. The split self, or the fracture between attachment and authenticity, creates a breeding ground for illness and disease. According to Dr. Mate, the psyche's natural state is one of wholeness, where a person's attachment and authenticity are in harmony. However, when the two are in conflict, the body and mind become strained, leading to a weakened immune system and the development of chronic illnesses. When a person's need for attachment is not met, they may experience feelings of rejection, abandonment, and isolation. These emotions trigger stress responses that activate the body's stress hormones, including cortisol, adrenaline, and norepinephrine. Over time, the chronic activation of these hormones weakens the immune system and leads to inflammation, which is the root cause of many illnesses. On the other hand, when a person is disconnected from their authentic self, they may experience feelings of meaninglessness, anxiety, and depression. This disconnection from oneself can also trigger stress responses that weaken the immune system and create conditions for disease. The conflict between attachment and authenticity can have a profound impact on our lives, as seen in the case of Me OK Ikaro. Me OK's journey towards healing was not an easy one. It required her to confront the painful memories of her childhood and come to terms with the fractured self that resulted from years of suppressing her emotions. As she delved deeper into her past, Mi OK realized that her autoimmune disorder was a physical manifestation of the emotional pain she had been carrying for years. She had grown up in a strict environment where showing emotions was discouraged, and she had learned to repress her feelings to gain acceptance from those around her. But the more she tried to please others, the more disconnected she became from her authentic self. She felt trapped, torn between her need for emotional proximity and her desire to be the author of her own life. It was only when she began to acknowledge and accept all parts of herself that she began to heal. Me OK's story highlights how our society's obsession with achievement and conformity can lead to a fractured self. We learn to reject parts of ourselves that do not fit society's expectations, leading to a constant state of inner conflict. This split self not only affects our emotional well-being but can also set the conditions for disease. As Dr. Mate notes, when we disconnect from our emotions and suppress our true selves, we are more likely to develop autoimmune diseases and other chronic illnesses. Our bodies become the battlegrounds for the war between our attachment needs and our desire for authenticity. But there is hope. By embracing all parts of ourselves, even those we have rejected, we can begin to heal and live more authentic lives. As Mio K shows us, it is possible to overcome even the most challenging obstacles and find peace within ourselves. One of the things many diseases have in common is inflammation, acting as kind of a fertilizer for the development of illness. 
We've discovered that when people feel threatened, insecure, especially over an extended period of time, our bodies are programmed to turn on inflammatory genes. Dr. Gabor Mate, The Myth of Normal Stress is a natural response to the challenges and demands of daily life. However, when we consistently suppress our emotions and needs, it can lead to chronic stress, which takes a significant toll on our bodies and sets the stage for disease. Our need for connection with others, or attachment, can sometimes conflict with our need to be true to ourselves, or authenticity. This can lead to a fractured sense of self, where we suppress certain parts of ourselves to win approval or affection from others. This emotional conflict activates a complex network of connections in the brain, including the hypothalamus, which is responsible for keeping our biological systems in balance, and the pituitary and adrenal glands, which release stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. Prolonged or chronic stress can lead to an excessive release of these hormones, which can exhaust our entire system over time. We may experience tense jitters, insomnia, or other physical symptoms as our nervous system is also impacted by chronic stress. One of the most damaging effects of chronic stress is that it suppresses our immune system, making us more vulnerable to illness. When our immune system functions properly, it floods into attack foreign substances and then dissipates. But chronic stress suppresses the signals that turn off the immune response, leading to chronic inflammation and autoimmune disorders like ALS or Meokes scleroderma. Stress can even impact our DNA, with telomeres being particularly vulnerable. Telomeres are tiny structures that protect our chromosomes from fraying, similar to the plastic aglets at the end of shoelaces. As we age, telomeres naturally shorten, but chronic stress and adversity can significantly accelerate this process, prematurely aging our cells and making us more susceptible to disease. The mind-body unity concept emphasizes that emotional stress is inseparable from the physical state of our bodies. The stress response evolved to help us survive in threatening situations, but modern social conditions can keep it constantly activated. Therefore, it's essential to learn how to manage stress effectively to maintain our physical and mental health. Imagine a city, bustling with cars and people moving quickly in every direction. The sounds of honking horns, screeching brakes, and chatter fill the air. This city is your body under stress. The highways represent the complex network of connections between your brain, pituitary and adrenal glands, and other organs that work to release stress hormones when an emotional stressor arises. But unlike a city that eventually quiets down at night, your body may not have the chance to recover from the constant onslaught of stress. As a result, the highways become clogged with traffic, and the sounds of the city become louder and more chaotic. This chronic stress response can eventually lead to a buildup of stress hormones that exhaust your entire system, leaving you vulnerable to disease. Imagine that the jitters you feel before a big presentation or an exam are like a small earthquake in the city, causing a brief disruption in traffic and noise. But chronic stress is like a constant earthquake, shaking the foundations of your body and wearing down your defenses against illness. As the stress response inhibits your body's natural defense against sickness, it's like an army that's always on high alert, ready to attack even when there's no threat. This chronic inflammation can cause the immune system to attack healthy cells, leading to autoimmune disorders like ALS or scleroderma. Imagine that the telomeres at the end of your chromosomes are like the walls around the city, protecting it from outside forces. But when these walls become too short, they can't protect the city anymore, leaving it vulnerable to invasion. Similarly, chronic stress can shorten your telomeres, prematurely aging your cells and making you more prone to illness. It's clear that stress is a significant factor in the mind-body unity. Just like a city, the health of your body depends on the harmony between its various systems. When stress disrupts this harmony, it can lead to illness and disease. 
But by understanding the effects of stress on our bodies, we can take steps to manage it and improve our overall health. Whether we realize it or not, it is our woundedness, or how we cope with it, that dictates much of our behavior, shapes our social habits, and informs our ways of thinking about the world. Dr. Gabor Mate, The Myth of Normal Imagine a world where the petri dish was our culture, and we were the microorganisms living within it. Just like the petri dish provides the optimal environment for bacteria to grow, our culture generates chronic stress and illness. One major source of stress is economic insecurity. With the ever-increasing costs of living, people are working longer hours and have less time for family and self-care. This can lead to a feeling of instability and uncertainty about the future. Even those in the middle class are struggling, as economic pressure has steadily increased since the 1980s. Discrimination and inequality also have a significant impact on our health. For example, studies have shown that black babies have a higher risk of death at birth if their doctor is not black. Women also have worse health outcomes after heart surgery than men because they are expected to resume caregiving duties earlier without adequate time to rest and heal. Moreover, our consumerist culture further exploits our stress and disconnection. Advertisements are designed to make us feel inadequate and insecure, promising to fulfill our needs through the purchase of their products. To make matters worse, those with financial power have far more influence over our collective destiny than the average person. This means that even when a large majority support a particular policy, it may not be implemented if it is not in the interest of the economic elite. It's no wonder that people are experiencing more stress than ever before. But if we can recognize the sources of this stress, we can begin to take action and create a healthier and more equitable culture for all. In addition to economic insecurity and discrimination, technology has also contributed to the chronic stress that many people experience. We're now constantly connected to work, social media, and news updates, which can make it difficult to switch off and relax. Moreover, social media platforms are designed to keep us engaged, which often means they trigger negative emotions like envy, insecurity, and anxiety. This constant exposure to negative emotions can lead to feelings of overwhelm and burnout. On top of this, many people feel pressured to present a perfect image of themselves on social media, which can cause them to suppress their authentic selves and emotions even further. This only adds to the conflict between attachment and authenticity that Dr. Mate has identified as a major source of stress. Another factor that contributes to chronic stress is the fast-paced, achievement-oriented culture that many of us live in. We're taught to value productivity and success above all else, which can lead to a constant feeling of pressure to do more and be better. This pressure can be especially difficult for those who are already dealing with economic insecurity, discrimination, or health issues. Finally, the COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated the chronic stress that many people were already experiencing. The uncertainty and fear surrounding the pandemic, along with the social isolation that many of us have experienced, have only added to the stress and anxiety that people are feeling. In light of all these factors, it's clear that chronic stress is a major problem in our culture. But the good news is that there are steps we can take to mitigate its effects. We can prioritize self-care, set boundaries with technology, and work to create a more just and equitable society. By doing so, we can start to build a petri dish that is more conducive to human flourishing. Children, especially highly sensitive children, can be wounded in multiple ways. By bad things happening, yes, but also by good things not happening, such as their emotional needs for attunement not being met. Dr. Gabor Mate, The Myth of Normal 
The impact of trauma on our lives is profound and far-reaching, and it often begins in childhood. This is because our society undermines our developmental needs, leading to chronic stress that can lead to trauma. In the 1990s, the Cleveland Clinic witnessed a strange phenomenon that revealed just how important our early experiences are. Nurses could often predict which patients would develop ALS, a degenerative autoimmune disease that attacks nerve cells in the brain and spine, based on their personalities. They would write comments in each patient's chart, such as probably has ALS, she is too nice, or no way, he is not nice enough. The nurses' predictions were almost always correct, and subsequent research supported their observations. Dr. Gabor Mate believes that trauma and chronic stress underlie much of what we call disease. Children are especially sensitive to stress, and they feel the effects of parental stress most acutely. When a mother is under economic stress, for example, her child's stress hormone levels rise. A child's development is shaped by their environment, and what happens in the formative years sets the foundation for their future health, brain development, and relationships. The child's primary developmental need is secure and reliable attachment to caregivers, coupled with warm, attuned, and consistent interactions. Poor attachment or stressed and distracted interactions can lead to shaky emotional and mental development. Childhood trauma is a pervasive problem in our society, and its roots lie in a failure to meet the developmental needs of our children. Despite knowing the importance of secure attachment and consistent, warm interactions in early childhood, our society seems to prioritize the needs of the economy over those of our children. This is evident from the medicalization of childbirth, which often results in obstetric trauma and undermines women's agency in the process. Even after birth, parental leave policies are inadequate, forcing many parents to return to work far too early and leaving infants without the critical contact they need with their caregivers. To make matters worse, parenting guides that advocate for harsh discipline and disconnection from children's emotions are often promoted as the norm. These approaches ignore the importance of attunement and empathy, which are critical to healthy emotional and mental development. All of these factors create the conditions for chronic stress and self-fracturing, which can lead to trauma and lasting emotional wounds that are carried throughout life. To address this problem, we need to prioritize the developmental needs of children and support parents in providing the nurturing and secure environment that is essential to healthy growth and development. By recognizing the importance of secure attachment, warm interactions, and empathic understanding in childhood, we can create a society that prioritizes the well-being of our children and promotes health and resilience for all. Unfortunately, our society does not do everything in its power to provide a low-stress environment for childbirth and childrearing. Parents face economic pressure and often feel alone and unsupported in raising children. Additionally, our culture centers child development around the needs of society rather than the needs of the child. Overly medicalized birthing practices deny women's agency and can lead to obstetric trauma, while parental leave policies undermine the integral contact that a child needs with caregivers in the first months of life. Parenting guides can also subvert parental instincts by encouraging disconnection and punishment. Dr. Benjamin Spock's influential guide, for example, encourages parents to sleep train infants by leaving them to cry it out. All of these factors contribute to chronic stress that can lead to trauma, which can be carried throughout life. No society can understand itself without looking at its shadow side. A society that fails to value communality, our need to belong, to care for one another, and to feel caring energy flowing toward us, is a society facing away from the essence of what it means to be human. Dr. Gabor Mate, The Myth of Normal Dr. Gabor Mate believes that our health is an expression of the life we've lived and the context surrounding it. 
He draws on his own experiences to illustrate this point, including his childhood in Nazi-occupied Hungary. Dr. Maidess' traumatic childhood, which included the loss of his Jewish grandparents to Auschwitz, set the template for his lifelong depression. Despite being sent away for his own safety, Dr. Maidess' separation from his mother left him emotionally detached and repressed. He now recognizes that his response to trauma was a reasonable and adaptive one, and that his nervous system and mind were shaped by the events of his childhood. Dr. Maidess' work with addiction patients has shown him that mental illness and addiction often serve as coping mechanisms for emotional pain and trauma. He argues that understanding the source of suffering, trauma, adversity, and stress as a product of our toxic culture is essential to putting sickness and disease in a different light. Rather than seeing illness as a sudden, random event, Dr. Mate proposes that we view it as a journey that may connect back to the earliest days of one's life and extend to the present. Instead of treating mental illness and addiction as mere diseases, he suggests that we examine them as expressions of the life and social context they emerged from. In this way, we can see sick bodies and minds as a siren calling for a deeper exploration of the wounds we carry. By looking honestly and openly at our past and present, we can transform our suffering and move towards healing. Imagine that you are sitting in a quiet room, listening to Dr. Mate speak. His voice is calm and soothing, but his words are powerful and full of meaning. He tells you that your health is not just a product of your genetics, but a reflection of the life you've lived and the context surrounding it. He uses the example of his own childhood trauma in Nazi-occupied Hungary to illustrate this point. As he speaks, you begin to think about your own life and the challenges you've faced. You realize that you've been ignoring the signs of stress and trauma that your body has been trying to communicate to you. You remember the time you lost your job and how it triggered feelings of shame and inadequacy. You also recall the death of a loved one and the profound grief you felt, but were never able to fully express. Dr. Maid explains that these experiences and emotions can have a profound impact on our physical and mental health. When we suppress them, they can manifest as illness and disease. He encourages you to see illness not as a personal failing, but as a reflection of the toxic culture we live in. He reminds you that addiction, mental illness, and chronic disease are often reasonable responses to the conditions of trauma and stress that many of us face. But he also offers hope. By acknowledging and addressing the root causes of our suffering, we can begin to heal. We can learn to cultivate compassion for ourselves and others, and create a healthier, more supportive society. As you listen to Dr. Mate, you feel a sense of clarity and purpose. You know that the journey towards health and wholeness won't be easy, but you're ready to take the first step. When we see mental illness as just a disease that strikes out of nowhere, we miss the opportunity to understand the purpose it once served. Dr. Mate argues that many addiction patients he has treated turn to drugs or alcohol as a way to escape their emotional pain and early trauma. And often, it is our society's idea of normal that makes us sick in the first place. By understanding the source of suffering, trauma, adversity, and stress as the social conditions of living in a toxic culture, we can put sickness and disease in a different light. Rather than just looking at symptoms and treating them as if they are separate from the individual and their experiences, we can look at the person as a whole and understand the journey that led them to where they are. What if someone who is sick is in the midst of a transformation? What if they are being called to look honestly and with an open heart at the wounds they carry in order to heal and move forward in a more healthy and fulfilling way? This idea challenges us to see illness not as a punishment or a sign of weakness, but as an opportunity for growth and self-discovery. In this way, we can view our own health as an expression of the life we've lived and the context surrounding it. Whether we're struggling with mental illness, chronic disease, or simply trying to stay healthy in a world that often makes that difficult, we can approach our journey with compassion, curiosity, and a willingness to learn and grow. 
and perhaps, in doing so, we can create a healthier, more supportive society for ourselves and future generations. Healing is like an onion. As you process through one layer of trauma to release the pain and heal, a new layer will surface. One layer after another layer will bring up new issues to focus on. Pace yourself. Only focus on one layer at a time. Dana Arcury, Soul Cry Healing is a process that involves finding a pathway to wholeness, and it requires an understanding of the factors that lead to illness. Dr. Mate believes that our culture fosters illness by promoting a false sense of what is normal and healthy. This leads to chronic stress, trauma, and disconnection from ourselves, others, and the world around us. However, despite the overwhelming challenges that our society faces, there is hope for healing. For Dr. Mate, healing is a natural movement toward wholeness that involves integrating our fractured parts. It requires acknowledging our suffering and the suffering of the world, and learning to confront the wounds that have caused disconnection. This process involves compassionately accepting ourselves and others as we are, without judgment or expectations. One powerful strategy that can help with this process is called compassionate inquiry. This is an exercise that involves answering introspective questions in a compassionate and open-minded way. The goal of this practice is to free oneself from automatic responses and adaptations to stress, adversity, and trauma that keep us disconnected from our true selves. The first step in this practice is to identify the areas in which you struggle to say no and how this impacts you. By doing this, you can recognize where you are denying your emotions and needs and prioritizing others. The next step is to identify the bodily signals that you may have been ignoring, as this can help you to recognize where emotional stress is being held in your body. Once you have identified these areas, you can begin to look at the hidden stories behind your inability to say no. This involves untangling the narrative that you have created and seeing how your responses and behaviors once served you. This understanding can help you to learn to hear your authentic, essential self, free from the automatic responses and adaptations to stress that have kept you disconnected. Healing is a process that takes time, patience, and a commitment to self-reflection and growth. But with the right tools and strategies, it is possible to find a pathway to wholeness and to live a more fulfilling and meaningful life. By cultivating compassion for ourselves and others, we can begin to heal from the wounds of our culture and find a way to live in greater harmony with ourselves and the world around us. Imagine you're a young woman who has always struggled with saying no to others, even when it means sacrificing your own needs and desires. You grew up in a family where you were taught to always put others first and to avoid conflict at all costs. Over time, you've noticed that this tendency has caused you a lot of stress and anxiety, as you constantly feel pulled in different directions. One day, you start experiencing physical symptoms like headaches and stomach aches, but you brush them off as just being part of your busy life. However, they don't go away, and you begin to wonder if they might be trying to tell you something. You decide to try the compassionate inquiry exercise, and you answer the questions honestly. As you reflect on your tendency to avoid saying no, you realize that it's connected to your fear of conflict and your desire to be liked by others. You also notice that you've been ignoring the physical signals that your body has been sending you because you don't want to acknowledge the fact that you're not taking care of yourself. As you delve deeper, you start to see how your childhood experiences have shaped your beliefs and behaviors and how they've contributed to your current situation. You realize that you need to start setting boundaries and prioritizing your own needs, even if it means having difficult conversations with others. This is hard work, but you feel a sense of relief and empowerment as you begin to reclaim your own agency. Over time, you notice that your physical symptoms begin to subside, and you feel more connected to your own feelings and desires. 
You also find that you're better able to handle conflict and communicate effectively with others. You realize that this is just the beginning of your healing journey, but you feel hopeful and inspired to continue exploring the ways in which you can integrate all the parts of yourself and move towards wholeness. Dr. Gabor Mate believes that the pathway to healing involves finding a way back to wholeness, which can only be achieved by reintegrating the fragmented parts of ourselves. This requires acknowledging our suffering and confronting the wounds that have caused our disconnection from ourselves, others, and the world around us. One way to begin this process is through a practice called compassionate inquiry, which involves asking ourselves introspective questions. By answering these questions honestly and without judgment, we can identify the areas in our lives where we deny our emotions and needs and prioritize others. We can also pay attention to bodily signals that we may have been ignoring, which can help us understand where emotional stress is held in our bodies. Through this process, we can identify the hidden stories behind our behaviors and responses to stress, adversity, and trauma. Once we can see how these stories once served us, we can begin to let go of the automatic responses that keep us disconnected. In the end, the goal of this healing work is to hear our authentic selves and reconnect with our essential being. By doing so, we can free ourselves from the toxic and normalizing aspects of our culture that breed disease and suffering. While detoxifying our culture may be a daunting task, by taking small steps towards healing ourselves, we can create a ripple effect of transformation in the world around us. Thank you for watching this video book summary of The Myth of Normal by Dr. Gabor Mate. We hope you found this summary insightful and informative, and that it has sparked your interest in exploring the book further. To get the most out of the book, we recommend that you listen to the free audiobook of The Myth of Normal or get your own copy. Dr. Maida's message is an important one, and it challenges us to rethink our approach to health and wellness. By confronting trauma, redefining what we consider normal, and addressing underlying conditions, we can find a pathway back to health and wholeness. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more video book summaries. We strive to bring you the best insights from the most influential books, so make sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you again for watching, and we encourage you to continue exploring these themes and to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below.